So, like, a few weeks ago, um, I caught some flack for uh, criticizing our Lord and Savior, Joe Rogan. And what did I criticize him on? Literally just spreading a lie. Um, but I'll get into that shortly. Uh, it's a persistent problem. It's a persistent fucking problem that people just spread lies. They don't care that what they're doing is damaging to people as long as the lie that they're spreading makes them look good. That's all. That's all they need. Uh, it benefits your side. It costs you very little because, you know, people are going to rally behind you and they're not going to leave as long as you do enough to confirm uh, your side after you spread the lie. You can just spread lies. That's the way a lot of people operate. Um, they'll say something before they're sure about it, um, and they'll only question things when it goes against their narrative. I um, mean, in this case, uh, <laughs> I, I had the audacity to go against Joe Rogan for uh, spreading a lie uh, and giving conservatives a bunch of fucking fodder for their lies that they also spread about trans people. And um, the lie that he spread uh, was about furries. And uh, this lie that he spread uh, caught fire. And it was like, it was making things trend. Uh, it was with Tulsi Gabbard, who was already being anti-trans. Um, and that was part of her whole thing there. It was part of her platform of leaving the Democrat Party is that she couldn't be anti-trans enough. So that, that's what it takes, you know? You start speaking out against uh, everything that an establishment does, and it doesn't matter whether or not what you're saying is true, it just matters that you uh, benefit from it. And in this particular case, he had her on his show, and what is one of the things he does? Well, she's talking about, uh, about these issues, and um, being basically conservative at this point, and uh, he just takes to spreading a lie. And, and just, it's just a lie. Um, watch this, watch this. And by the way, note that when, when I pull this up, um, you know, like Jamie should have pulled up this lie. Uh, when I pull this up, uh, it's from the Daily Caller. Because the Daily Caller posted this clip. Uh, it's a piece of shit outlet run by a piece of shit. Um and funded by <laughs> a billionaire piece of shit. And ultimately, the whole thing uh, is designed to rile people up, is designed to keep people like in suspension so that they believe uh, whatever conservatives tell them, basically. That's the point of the Daily Caller. And uh, so you'll notice that uh, that when I shared this video, I shared it, from the official Daily Caller account, you can see the uh, the check mark right there, and that uh, that that video share for those of you who don't use Twitter, which is some of you from the uh, from the YouTube uh, like sort of metrics and analytics, uh, you know, for those of you who don't, you can like take a link to a video that somebody shares, and you can post like slash video slash one after your your link and you can embed their video with a link to their post on your tweet um so that's what i did because i wanted it to be absolutely clear that this was coming from a conservative site just blasting this thing that nobody had any proof of not even joe right here so without any further ado there's kids ready for this my friend his wife is a school teacher and she works at a school that had to install a litter box in the girl's room because there is a girl who's a furry oh who identifies goodness. as an animal and her mother badgered the school until they agreed to put a litter box in one of the stalls. Yeah. So this girl goes into the litter room or to the, the girl's room and urinates or whatever i don't know if she poops in it that's pretty gross <laughs> yeah you know i mean it, like if you could teach your cat by the way here's the thing if you could teach your cat 
to use the toilet, you would. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Like, you don't want a box of piss <laughs> yeah, in your house. Right. It's the worst. I've had cats my whole life. <laughs> it's the worst thing about having cats. you got to clean that box of piss every day. Yeah. Like, it's the greatest thing about dogs. They go outside. Like, you're, you're a fucking the human. Cat's got- There's kids. Ready for this? Notice. He didn't say, I don't have proof of this. He didn't buffer it. He just said that it happened. He said that it happened because somebody he uh, knows, allegedly, works in a school where it happened. Now, I, I brought this up and I said, not a good moment for Joe. He literally, he's literally spreading a lie. That never happened, and there's never been any proof of this. But he read a story that somebody said, and that was good enough for him. And Daily Caller spreading this lie is unsurprising. I also said, uh, because it's a good quote to basically always bring up in this day and age, uh, I brought up, uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan is world famous for his skepticism, and for telling Jamie to pull something up if he thinks it isn't true. If being equally skeptical to him about all the things he was bothers you, it's because you want to uncritically use him as a source. I'm challenging your dogma. And I posted the quote, What can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. Because that's fucking true. All right? And I want you to remember that because uh, it's trending again. The subject is trending again because he admitted he had zero proof. Not only that, but he admitted that he fucked up the story when telling it. And this is if we believe that he wasn't just lying right here, right now, that, you know, this person did indeed exist and did indeed tell him the story, right? I'm going to go through this video now with you where he says, I was right. And then all of the other people, all the people who told me that, uh, that, 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 oh no, he's not spreading a lie. All the people who were, <laughs> were, were antagonizing myself and others for saying, hey, maybe don't spread a lie, Joe. Uh, maybe don't spread a lie to millions of people, Joe Rogan. Um, those people who got mad and said, oh, he wasn't spreading a lie. He was, he was saying what he was told. Um, A, fuck all of you because you shouldn't just spread what you're told. You should wait for proof. Um, and B, uh, he, he fucked up the story. That's the most generous assessment that can be made of this situation. And, uh, in order to prove that, here is, uh, all of that from the horse's mouth where uh, in a Daily Mail article, it's going over the fact that uh, Joe Rogan admits story he told Tulsi Gabbard about school installing litter box in girls' bathroom for a furry child who identifies as a cat has no proof. And I'm going to go down to the actual video, because I believe in that. And I'm going to hit play here, and you're going to listen. Right, or the kitty litter boxes in schools. Last week, you know, that got spread around as a meme because it kind of fit the conservative view of, you know, liberals and their confusion about gender and sex and and. and but and, the kitty litter boxes is a weird one. It is weird. It's, you like, know, it's more I, like an urban legend. I, I fed into that, and let me. I should probably clarify that a little bit. I have a friend, and my friend's wife is a s- school teacher, and she told him that there was discussions in the school that a mother wanted to put a litter box in one of the bathrooms. And he told me this, and I talked about it on here, and then people were saying, that's not true, it's an internet rumor. So, just to give this a little bit of start here, he says, I'm going to clarify it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say that I just did something wrong right off the bat. I'm, j- I'm going to clarify it. I don't think it was unclear. I think it was a lie that somebody told. And I think you believed a lie, Joe. Um, and and then I think that if this is, you know, true, that this discussion happened, it was just a discussion, which means that you lied about the um, fucking discussion that happened because you said that it actually happened and that it wasn't just some kooky mom. It actually happened. 
That's what you said. You said it actually happened, Joe. So let's be real here. Uh, the clarification is that not only did you spread a lie that never had any proof, but uh, you further lied by changing the story. Um, that is if this story was even told to you in this way, which I have reason to doubt. Um, but let's let's continue this. So I contacted him again, and I said, tell me exactly what she said, and contact her and find out. She no longer works at that school. She works for another school. Mm. She contacted the other school. She didn't get a response. I don't think they actually did it. I think there was discussions mm. about doing it because there was one particularly wacky mother, but there is. it doesn't seem that there's any proof that they put a litter box in there. Probably because there is no proof, and there's no proof that this discussion happened either. There is no mother out there who thought, hey, my kid is a, is a fucking furry. I'm going to propose at a PTA meeting that they put a litter box in the school for her. And there's nothing with that because th the kid would get bullied. Any kid who is caught using a litter box in a fucking public restroom would get bullied. The litter box would be destroyed. That would happen because they're already bullied for being furries. I know plenty of people who are furries and... Uh, not well received in their peer groups, to put it mildly. I mean, it's getting better, but it's getting better despite all this stuff that makes it worse temporarily. While people like Joe Rogan spread this kind of shit around. It doesn't make it any easier to be yourself when uh, people are literally just lying about you because of a thing they know nothing about and choose not to understand. Um... So I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd stop it there, and we'll continue now. The reason why I was interested in it and willing to entertain it was there was about uh, 10 years or so ago, we went to, uh, there was a UFC in Pittsburgh. And when we went there, as we landed, we were driving from the airport to the hotel, we see all these people with mascot outfits on. We're like, what is going on? <laughs> And we talked to this guy, and he said, there's a furry convention in town. Right. And I said, wow, this is crazy. So they all decided to get together. So they were at bars and on the streets, and it was like a get-together. They used to do it in San Diego, but at the time, San Diego was a little bit more conservative, and they were having a hard time doing it, so they moved it to Pittsburgh. And this was the year they moved it to Pittsburgh. Mm. This is according to him. So we check into the hotel. The hotel, uh, the guy who was working the front desk was saying how crazy it was. That these folks were asking for their food to be delivered in bowls on the ground so they could eat it like animals. And I'm like, that is crazy. And then he said, they asked for a litter box in the lobby. <laughs> now, they didn't put a litter box into the lobby, but someone, according to this man, asked him for a litter box. Mm. I'm like, that is crazy. So I went and... It, it might be crazy because it might not be true. It might be yet another thing that somebody allegedly told you that you simply believed and are now spreading. I mean, just to be clear, I wouldn't put it past them because a lot of these people in these conventions end up turning it into an absolute nightmare. Um, you can, you know, look into to Rainforest if you want to hear about that. Like, there's plenty of cases of these things just turning into degenerate shit fests, right? But, just to be clear... Um, <laughs> just believing these guys and just saying, oh, well, the, he said it, and this is a wacky new thing that I know nothing about, so I'm going to believe it, and then use it as a basis to believe other bullshit, that's not any sort of reason. This is the same kind of unreasonability that sort of plagued the, the whole COVID thing, and, and like, oh, I'm just going to believe whatever I'm told and mindlessly spread it and then tell anybody who questions what I'm spreading that they're that they're full of shit. You know, that's what a lot of these people do who parrot this stuff. Joe, at least to his credit, you know, reversed some of the damage, maybe, by saying that, you know, oh, I, I actually had no proof. There's no proof that this happened, you know? Uh, but But at the same time, there are so many people who just spread it in the same way that these fucking typically transphobes are are to totally willing to just accuse me 
of being a pedophile who wants to mutilate children's genitals because I support trans people at all, even trans adults. Even if I say kids probably shouldn't be getting surgery uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, uh, I'm still accused of this, right? You know, of any sort. Of any sort of surgery, kids probably shouldn't be getting it unless it's absolutely necessary as determined by a doctor. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty much the most reasonable pro-trans guy you'll meet, right? Um, but, like, they still accuse me of this, and they use this fucking shit that he helps spread as fodder for their unreasonability because, oh, if you can identify as the opposite gender, what's the, what's to stop you from being like that girl in that school, which I can't prove exists or happened, who said that she wanted a litter box in the bathroom and they installed it and they're installing litter boxes now and I'm going to believe this uncritically and spread it because I'm full of shit. That's, that's what these people are. These people are just full of shit. They're stupid pieces of garbage who believe this stuff, nor like, without criticism. And I was really disappointed in, in, um, in, in fucking Joe Rogan for being like this. Because I, I've been a subscriber for, like, well over half a decade. I, I like a lot of this stuff that he does, but when it comes to shit like this, maybe he should shut the fuck up until he researches something. You know. That's, that's, that's just a, a, a fucking pro tip here. And did a deep dive online. I went to forums where furries go, because I was trying to find, like, is this a thing? Do they mm -hmm. like to use litter boxes? Out of all of my searching, I could only find one poster, one guy who said he had used a litter box. Mm. So this one person who was saying that he thought it was kinky and he'd like to use it, he, they, it, them, whatever like to use a litter box. Mm. So that was all I could find. So is that something that people do, or is it something that people talk about doing because it's fun? I don't know. Might have been good to start with that. Just maybe might have been good to start with that. Just a thought to maybe start with the fact that you don't know. And then not say it to begin with. Can you do that, Joe? I'm pretty sure you can. I'm pretty sure that, like, you can leave something out of a public conversation that's going to affect, like, millions of people initially, and then many, many millions of people by this sort of thing spreading. I'm pretty sure that you can just, like, say, I don't know enough about this to bring it up in front of such a gigantic audience, and maybe I have a responsibility there. You know, <laughs> possibly. Um, and then he goes on to just say, hey, but this is a sex thing. They like to have sex in their fursuits. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them like to have sex. So, some people like to have sex in fucking cop uniforms. It doesn't mean that policing is inherently sexual, except being a bitch for the state. You know, maybe don't talk about things you don't understand because the vast majority of them are just drawing characters and if they have a suit, it doesn't even have a hole necessary for that. Most fursuits are not mersuits. You know, most people in this, like, community don't do that. The vast majority of them don't do that. The vast majority of them can't even afford a fursuit. But you're saying that they have fursuits and they like to have sex in them, and that makes this an inherently sexual thing. No. Some of them do. A small percentage of them have fursuits, and a smaller percent of th those people fuck in them. But it's not inherently sexual. It's not inherently sexual. Most of them don't fuck in fursuits. Most of them don't even have fursuits. And they've never requested fucking litter boxes in schools. And those have never been installed. And maybe these things are components of, you know, some kind of, of, of 
viral claims that are being claimed by conservatives who just want to spread bullshit that confirms their agenda. And maybe these people don't actually care about, you know, reality, protecting innocent people, doing jack shit reasonably. They just care about their particular viewpoint getting protected. That's it. That's all. And you joined them, however temporarily, and you still had to get in your dig there at the end. He's still got his dig in there at the end. And for those of you who don't believe me, just, you know, because I, I, I've i quoted the rest of this. I've played the rest of this so you guys could hear it from the horse's mouth. So here's here's what he had to say. But one of the things that I found about these furries is, like, it's sexual in mm. some sort of weird way. They, they, they like to get together and have sex with their furry outfits on mm. and they don't want people to know who they are or what they they want to keep the outfits on so it's a cosplay kind of thing yeah it's like a cosplay kink thing oh, yeah. that some people yeah. engage in like, yeah. how that got connected to gender i do not understand because it seems to be a completely different sort of kink but what i think people have concern with is that it's nonsense and that it's See what he did there? He never once just said, I spread a lie. There was never any proof that this discussion even happened. And I further enhanced this um, alleged discussion by um, adding details to it that didn't fucking happen. He never admitted that in such express and actually clarified terms. What did he do? He, uh, he doubled down. He said, you know, yeah, sure, I may have been wrong. The thing I said wasn't true. Um, but, you know, also, though, I, 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 I saw this convention. I only asked an outsider about it. I didn't ask any of them about it because I didn't want to hear from them. I just wanted to mock them. And... When I did that, after I, after I found just enough information to mock these people, um, I just walked away with that without even getting any proof uh, based on that. I didn't get any proof that they wanted a litter box in the lobby. I didn't get any proof that they wanted any of this shit. What I did is I got a hearsay story, allegedly, where <laughs> these people allegedly requested that. And some other weird shit. Aren't these people fucking weird? I still have the upper hand here. And then he kept uh, this particular beat up by going like, yeah, you know, not only do I have the upper hand here, but I'm going to drive it in further by saying I went to a bunch of forums and only one guy was like this at all uh, out of the, like, so many people I looked through. There's, there's no proof that this was a thing. Um, but... <laughs> he kept it going by saying it's just a sex thing and that he doesn't understand. It's nonsense. Maybe, maybe the reason people are like this is because the state from cradle to grave has run society based on conformity and groupthink mechanisms and people are likely to dogpile people uh, who do anything out of the ordinary, who violate social norms. Uh, maybe that is a problem that is exacerbated by people immediately uh, believing and spreading stories against the outgroup because they, you know, don't desire to seek any, you know, more information about these things. They just, they heard it, that's enough for them. Or because they, they, they saw it online and so they decided to concoct a story about somebody who works somewhere. My dad works at Nintendo kind of vibes. And then... After that, uh, these people uh, get in front of their, like, millions of people, and they say that this is what, what's happening, and then these people in these, you know, sub-communities, they suddenly have a lot to fucking worry about. And the things that they have to worry about now include a bunch of conservatives from outlets like the Daily Caller um, jumping down their neck because they happen to belong to a subculture that somebody spread a lie about and didn't bother to understand. And maybe this sort of community 
uh, might attract the kind of person who is also persecuted uh, in a similar way, like a trans person, a gay person, that sort of thing, uh, persecuted by the same kinds of people like the Daily Caller and all of these groups who just mindlessly parrot these sorts of things or actively create these lies in order to demonize their opponents and make everybody who isn't them seem like a monster. Maybe you wouldn't want your face to be exposed, and maybe doing this is a new way to be in the closet while not being there. Because they can be behind their, like, online personas, and they can be who they want to be without having to attach their name and face to it so that their school doesn't bully them, so that their social circles don't exclude them so that they can have a new social circle which does accept them um, and doesn't need to know who they are. It's a safer place to be for this sort of person. And maybe this sort of person uh, would be more likely to be in a sexual minority because they both want that safety from people who believe and spread lies automatically and a variety of other sort of bigoted things. Does that make it any less nonsense, Joe? That maybe the society which has conditioned people into the kind of groupthink that makes the Atlantic release pieces about things like pandemic amnesty? Maybe that sort of society is anathema to freedom, and these people just want a little bit of it back. You know, so they want to be anonymous, even though Jordan Peterson says that they're nothing but anonymous troll demons if they don't show their face and name behind what they're doing. Aww. You know, <laughs> even though that sort of bullshit exists, um, they still persist because they want what they want anyway. They want that freedom back. So they put the mask on, they put the outfit on. And they can be their character. They can be more who they want to be. With less scrutiny from people who can destroy everything about them by posting lies. Because if you posted this about a group of people with their face exposed, then maybe you could post their faces too. And maybe their faces would be attached to who they are. And maybe that would make bigots, you know, attack them. Maybe there's a reason people in subversive movements like Anonymity, Jordan Peterson, and maybe they're not just all anonymous troll demons, and maybe uh, jo uh, Joe Rogan should actually give enough of a shit about truth to not spread shit like this haphazardly. Like, research things before you talk about it on your show, maybe. You know? Because then you won't be contributing to the kinds of problems that would make these people feel the need to hide their faces in order to do things that don't really hurt anybody, that aren't a problem, but that pe plenty of people who spread this sort of thing want to harm them for anyway, want to cancel them for anyway. You know, it's funny. For a group of people who are so against cancel culture, I find oftentimes conservatives are the most willing to cancel people as long as they fall within the outgroup. Internet mobs are totally acceptable as long as those internet mobs are affecting the left, or people that these people want to lie about being on the left so that they can lump them in with the outgroup and justify the hate, justify the attacks. Maybe, maybe... The right could be better about that, and the <laughs> groups that they persecute wouldn't have to hide. Maybe the hiding, maybe the anonymity, maybe the putting a different persona on the front of your existing one is a result of a society that attacks people who are out in the open with a variety of things that don't hurt anybody. Maybe we need a libertarian future where this isn't the fucking status quo. And maybe that would give us the ability to understand all of the mechanisms necessary to not only keep it this way, but to smash the fucking state.